Hey guys, it's Eugene back with part four of our build log for Nostromo. Uh, you can find parts one, two, and three if you need to catch up. Uh, it's been a while since our last video. Uh, of course, you know the holidays are always a busy time. I went to New York City to do some family stuff there and also had a nice relaxing and serene New Year's Eve in Glen Ellen, California. Uh, rented a little cabin up there and cooked and watched TV and tried our best to do a crossword puzzle. Uh, after that, it was back to the grind of work, so things have been a little slow, but I'm happy to bring you another video. And after this one, we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit. And at the end of this video, we will talk about the content that's coming up in the future. But for now, let's get into the topic of this video, which is filling the water cooling loop and planning where that water is gonna go. Not, not in that order. Here you can see me working on routing the second water cooling loop, the one responsible for the GPUs. Uh, we have eight EK Vardar PWM fans on intake duty covering two 4AD radiators. You can also see me attaching the Aqua Computer USB flow meter, which we will use to obviously monitor the flow through that loop. One thing to keep in mind as you're setting up your loop is to make sure that there are as few bends as possible, particularly avoiding 90 degree bends. Each bend adds restriction to the path, which in turn slows the flow of water through your components and radiators, and that results in worse cooling performance. Once all the loop components were connected, my pal and I uh, prepared to leak test the system. The first step was mixing up some Mayhem's Blitz, which you can see me doing here. I like to use Blitz Part 2 in my leak test to clean any remaining gunk out of the radiators and blocks. You're not supposed to keep it flowing through your system for too long, so I think this is a perfect use case for it. As Peter looked on, I filled the loop very slowly through a fitting and tube attached to the top cover of the reservoir. He warned me when it got close to the top, at which point I plugged in the power supply. The PSU was only connected to the pumps, but there's a catch. It won't actually turn on if the 24-pin motherboard cable isn't connected. That's the case with every power supply I've ever used. But there is, of course, a way around this. You can trick your power supply by plugging the 24-pin cable into a false connector with a jumper in it. These are available at your favorite online modding store. So when you turn it on, you can see that the reservoir drains pretty quickly. Uh, be sure to turn it off as soon as it gets to the bottom, as you definitely don't want your pump to be running dry, as they say. Then just fill the reservoir back up and turn the PSU on again. Eventually, you'll get to the point when the reservoir level will not decrease, as the water will have been distributed to all your components, and you can just allow the water to cycle through your system. Oh no, we sprang a leak. It turns out that I forgot to put an O-ring on one of the temperature sensors, the one going out from the GPU bridge back into the reservoir. The leak was a tiny drip, but we noticed it from the little wet spot on the paper towel below. These paper towels are essential for this very reason. They not only keep your components dry in case of a moderate leak, although nothing too heavy, but also serve as a sort of canary in the coal mine, since it's a lot easier to see if a part of a paper towel is damp than to notice a single drop coming from a fitting once a minute. You can see me using my finger to plug the hole in the block after I've removed the fitting, then having Peter put the O-ring on the fitting before reinserting it. Pretty soon it was good as new. Now, while you could be waiting as long as 24 hours for your leak test to complete, you may want to take this time to work on other aspects of your system. I decided to put the passive heatsink on the back of my Aquero, and also to install my hard drives into the cage that comes with the STH-10 case. 
This thing is awesome, by the way, and I love the vibration absorbing rubber mounts that come with it. Another example of great Case Labs craftsmanship. With all that done, it was time for my final leak test, which began by draining as much of the Mayhem's Blitz as I possibly could, followed by filling the reservoir with Mayhem's Pastel Ice White. Here's a little pro tip about leak testing. You don't have to risk your components by just pouring in the water and hoping for the best. Before you do that, you can air test. Just seal up everything in your loop except for one fitting, then connect that to a male-to-male -male fitting that goes from the G quarter inch thread type to the NPT thread type. From there, connect an NPT three-way fitting and hook that up to a Schrader valve, like what you'd find in a bike tire, and a pressure gauge. Use a pump to fill up the Schrader valve and monitor the pressure gauge to see if any air is leaking. It's a good way to test the integrity of your loop without risking some soggy components. Now that you've had a look at some of the process of putting these loops together, I wanted to give you a closer look at the fittings and route that I've chosen so that if you want something uh, that's identical or very similar, you'll be able to basically create the same thing that I have. Uh, it's not the only method of creating this water cooling system, but uh, it's one that works. Uh, I've tested this for a little while, so um, I know that everything is staying pretty cool and very quiet. So hopefully this will help. Um, I'll have to move Gary out of the way here. Excuse me. So here we have the Aqualis reservoirs with the aqua computer pumps. Uh, and you begin, we'll start with the lower loop here. You begin with the out port uh, that I've connected this 90 degree bits power fitting. Um, and that's attached to a Primo Chill revolver fitting that holds the actual uh, PETG tubing. And unless I note otherwise, all of the angle fittings are bits power and all of the fittings that are holding the rigid tubing are the Primo Chill revolvers. So that goes out to another uh, fitting as well as the bits power pass through that goes through the back panel. I'm going to turn the computer. Don't get scared by the rat's nest. We'll cover cable management in the next video. So that pass through that you saw goes here. And these are the monsoon uh, fittings that are holding the soft tubing that we're using in the back just to make routing a little bit easier. Um, and that goes straight to the 560 radiator that's covering the entire bottom loop. It goes out of the radiator and into another pass through uh, to which I've connected a 45 degree fitting. And that pass through comes up here, right under the motherboard loop. It goes up to a RAM block, from the RAM block to the main motherboard block, again to the RAM block and back down. Now from the pass through, it goes to a flow meter, an aqua computer flow meter here. Um, you'll see how all of these components are connected to the Aquero unit uh, in the video that covers that. And from the flow meter, it goes to a aqua computer filter. You can see that looks pretty tight. Uh, it's also connected with a T block to this drain port, bits power. Uh, and from the filter, it goes up to this pass through and back into the reservoir. You'll notice I'm using this in port rather than this one because that allows the uh, Aqualis reservoir to realize that cool fountain effect. Uh, turning now to the GPU loop, again it goes out of the out port and to the back wall where it goes across to the flow meter, from the flow meter to the first 480 reservoir, out of that one into the second reservoir, and then down into the GPU loop. It's connected to this uh, to the EK bridge that connects all three of the video card water blocks and then back into the reservoir. Now, in this case, I put the drain port right where the other unused in port goes uh, just because that was one of the free ones. And it's also the lowest point in the loop and that's always where you want your drain port to be. So now that you've had this detailed look, I hope it'll help you build your own loop or at least give you some tips if you don't want some, something exactly like this of how you can construct your own. 
Uh, in the next video, we'll cover cable management, as I mentioned, and also benchmarks. And to help me with that, please do leave some comments below letting me know what kind of benchmarks you'd like to see. Um, I have a ton of games that I can show, or I can use synthetic benchmarks, but I want this to be helpful for you, which means I need your input. Uh, also, let me know if you want overclocks to be applied and if you want a comparison of overclocked and unoverclocked benchmarks for those uh, programs and games. So until then, um, thank you so much for your subscriptions and for your likes and favorites. Um, it really motivates me to complete the videos and to give you guys more content. So this is Eugene signing off.